I'm Nina Cole Giovanni, and I'm a fisheries biologist with New Jersey Fish and Wildlife's Marine Resources Administration. Today, we are here on the bay side of Island Beach State Park, where there is a very important habitat lying just beneath the surface right behind me. Submerged aquatic vegetation, also known as SAV, refers to rooted vascular plants that grow completely underwater except for periods of brief exposure at low tides. In New Jersey, the two dominant species of SAV are eelgrass and widgeon grass, and both species can be found throughout the Barnegat Bay to Little Egg Harbor estuary system. In fact, the Barnegat Bay contains about 75% of New Jersey's seagrass beds. The remaining 25% can be found largely in Little Egg Harbor Bay and the state's northern coastal rivers. Seagrasses are important as they serve as the base of the food web, providing food and energy to marine life throughout the ecosystem. They provide habitat and nursery ground for many commercially and recreational important species like shellfish, crustaceans, and finfish, as well as a number of waterfowl species. SAV can also improve water quality by storing and processing nutrients and trapping suspended sediments. And large, dense seagrass beds can also dampen waves and currents, which helps to protect our shorelines. SAV has been recognized as an important climate change mitigator as it is capable of capturing and storing atmospheric carbon dioxide for long periods of time, as well as buffering ocean acidification. All of these important ecosystem services provided by SAV make it a necessary habitat for us to better understand and protect. This summer, Marine Resources staff collaborated with Dr. Richard Lathrop from Rutgers University, Dr. Elizabeth Lacey from Stockton University, and the Barnegat Bay Partnership on a project to map SAV habitat throughout the Barnegat Bay and Little Egg Harbor estuary. Aircraft was used to collect aerial imagery, and those images were then interpreted by data collected in the water by divers throughout the study area. This project was last conducted in 2003 and again in 2009, and the results of this new assessment will enhance our understanding of where SAV is present throughout the estuary and to determine the health of these habitats. Routine monitoring and mapping will allow biologists to take the next steps in conserving New Jersey's SAV, enhancing policy and regulations currently in place, and establishing additional monitoring and outreach programs. We visited various locations at low tide throughout the estuary. Once we were on site, we tossed a buoy marker and weighed anchor. One diver would then scout for SAV. If it was determined that SAV was present, both divers would enter the water with an L-shaped survey grid to estimate percent cover in 10% increments of eelgrass, widgeon grass, and macroalgae to compare with the aerial imagery. Our sampling grid was composed of eight quadrats. One diver would start at the first quadrat, while the second diver would start at the eighth, before both meeting at the fifth quadrat to sample together for data accuracy. At each sampling grid, a handheld GPS unit was used to take a compass reading at the left-hand axis of the sampling grid. All estimates were verbally relayed to staff on board our skiff, who recorded the data. Waypoint 12, zero, zero, one, two. Then, it was time to visit the next station. Although SAV provides many important benefits, there are also many threats that this habitat faces. Algal blooms can prevent sunlight from reaching seagrasses, reducing their ability to photosynthesize. SAV is also sensitive to storms and floods, which increases the amount of suspended sediment in the water and can decrease water clarity. An increase in the frequency and intensity of storms can also have negative effect on SAV. In the busy summer season, when boat traffic has increased, SAV beds can be damaged by boat propeller scars. These scars can make it difficult for SAV to recover, and the scars can persist for years. The good news is that prop scars can be easily avoided by boaters simply lifting their engines and slowly cruising through these shallow areas. The next survey will focus on New Jersey's coastal rivers and will allow us to have a new updated mapping of SAV coverage throughout New Jersey. These mapping efforts will allow DEP to take important next steps in conserving and protecting these critical habitats. We would like to thank all staff included in this project 
as well as our partners at the Barnegat Bay Partnership, Dr. Lathrop at Rutgers Center for Remote Sensing and Spatial Analysis, and Dr. Lacey with Stockton University's Marine Science Program.